Hey everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today we're going to be talking about empirical and molecular formulas. So let's kind of look at the difference between them. The empirical formula is the simplest form of a formula. That is like the reduced ratio of the formula or the smallest we can get it. The molecular formula is going to be larger than the empirical formula um, the majority of the time. And the molecular formula, you can usually reduce down to get to the empirical formula. So um, let me show you what I mean here. The molecular formula is like the actual formula that's right in front of you. So this one is C6H6. Well, we can reduce that down. We can divide these by six each and we can get the empirical formula CH and they're really just one each after dividing by six. If I look at this example, C6H12O6, we can divide all of these by six as well. So if we do that, we're gonna end up getting CH2O because we don't really have to write the ones. So the empirical formula is the reduced simplest formula and the molecular is gonna be your actual formula. On occasion, your molecular formula will be the empirical formula. So for example, if you were given a question on a test and it said, the molecular formula is CH2O. What is the empirical formula? Well, we can't reduce it any further. So therefore they would be identical. The molecular formula would also equal empirical formula. All right, let's try some math. So it says solve for the empirical formula. A compound is found to have a percent composition of 5.94% hydrogen and 94.06% oxygen. In order to solve this, we need to follow these steps here. The first thing we're gonna do is change our percentage to a gram. Then we're gonna convert our grams to moles in a bridge. It's a one-step bridge. And then we're gonna divide by the smallest number by all of our answers. Once we do that, we need to look at our rounding rules so that we can go ahead and get our empirical formula. Let's just try it out. So we are given percentages and we're gonna just convert them to grams. All you have to do is ditch the percent and put a G for grams and you are good to go. The next one, we need to convert grams to moles. So go ahead and set up your one-step bridges. You're gonna use um, your grams that you were given. So here we have 5.94 grams of hydrogen. Diagonal down needs to be grams of hydrogen and you're looking at your periodic table for the molar mass of hydrogen, which is the 1.01. .01. And we're going to change that into moles. One mole equals the molar mass. Put it in your calculator, you get 5.88 moles of hydrogen. We're going to repeat the same process over here with the 94.06 grams of oxygen. This time our uh, molar mass on the periodic table is 16. So our math is going to come out to 5.88 moles of oxygen. Now it's very rare that you get the same answer for both but you're gonna look and you're gonna say which one is the smallest number, and then you're gonna divide both of these answers by that smaller number. So it's gonna look like this. I wrote them both out and we're dividing by 5.88 since they're the same in this case. And we're gonna get one mole of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. So um, I don't need to use any rounding rules, which I'll remind you about in a second, because they are come out to whole numbers. So when I write my empirical formula, I'm just writing that I have one mole of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. In other words, HO. I don't have to write the ones, they're just understood. Now let's go over those rounding rules. If I were to get an answer that had a decimal, I cannot have a um, part of an atom. So I can't have like half of an atom or 0.5 of an atom. So we have to round this to get to whole numbers so we have whole atoms. So here's your rounding rules. If you end up with an answer that has a 0.5, you have to multiply all your answers by two. If you end up with an answer with 0.33 or 0.66, you have to multiply all your answers by three. And if you end up with 0.25 or 0.75, you have to multiply all your answers by four. Let me show you an example of what that looks like. Here we have chromium and oxygen. They went ahead and put this in their bridges and changed their grams to moles. So here's where we are right now. They need to divide by their smaller answer. The smaller one is 1.315. So both of them get divided by the smaller answer. This one, chromium, comes out to be one, of course. 
Um, however, oxygen comes out to 1.5. If I were to just put this in the formula exactly the way it looks, it would be Cr1 O 1.5, but I cannot have half of an oxygen atom floating around. That doesn't exist. So we need to use our rounding rules. Because I have a 0.5, I need to multiply both of these answers by two. Okay, so I do the one times two equals two, so that one becomes a two, and I'm gonna multiply that 1.5 by two as well when I get three. So this becomes our new empirical formula, Cr2O3. Okay, let's go ahead and try another one. The empirical formula of a compound is CF2, and the molar mass of the compound is 200.028 grams. Find the molecular formula of the compound. So let's kind of think of this conceptually really quick, and then I'm gonna show you a shortcut in just a minute, okay? So um, we have CF2. Our ratio is a one to two. I need one carbon for every two fluorine. That means I can come up with lots of different molecular formulas to match this empirical formula. Here's some possible answers that we can have, right? Notice I'm increasing one, but I'm keeping my ratio the same, one to two, one to two, one to two. In other words, if I reduce these down, they're all gonna be reduced down to the empirical formula, CF2. Now, I need to figure out which one of these is the correct answer. Well, it's telling me I need the molar mass of 200.028 grams. So I need to go to the periodic table, look up carbon, look up fluorine, and start doing some molar masses. So carbon is 12, fluorine is roughly 19. So if I do one carbon plus two fluorine, it gives me 50. If I do two carbon and four fluorine added together, it gives me 100. If I do three carbon and six fluorine, it gives me 150. If I do four carbon and eight fluorine, it gives me 200. And that is exactly what we're looking for in our word problem. So here's the molecular formula that it's wanting. C4F8, and that would be our answer. You guys, this is the very long and drawn out way of doing this, but it does work. And conceptually, if you understand this, then it's really good for you and you'll understand pretty much the rest of it. So let's find an easier way of doing this, okay? If we use these two formulas, which look scarier than they are, so we're gonna first do our molar mass of the molecular formula, and we're gonna divide that by the molar mass of our empirical formula. Once we solve for that, we're gonna get our multiplication factor or like our multiplier. And you're just gonna multiply that by the empirical formula, and then you're done, okay? So let's go ahead and try the same problem, but use our formulas. So we're gonna take the molar mass of our molecular formula, which was from the question, the 200.028. So go ahead and put that in the top. And the bottom is gonna be the molar mass of your empirical formula. That is the CF2. That's the empirical formula. They didn't give you the mass. So we still need to go to the periodic table, look for one carbon and two fluorine, add it all together, and you end up getting the 50 grams per mole. Now we can divide these two. If we divide these two, we end up getting four, or roughly four. You're gonna wanna round a little bit if you're close to a whole number, okay? Um, now this is our multiplier number. We're gonna take this four and multiply it by our empirical formula in order to get our molecular formula. So we end up doing four times the one and you get C4, and then four times the two and you get F8. So here is the molecular formula. Notice we got the same answer as before, right? But this is a much quick and simpler way to do it. You guys, I hope this helped. Go ahead and check out other videos if you need more help in chemistry. Subscribe, like this video, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye everybody.